Okay, so the next victim on the weathering uh, desk is this uh, Pillsbury cylindrical hopper. And, uh, yeah, brand new, out the box. And uh, we're going to uh, work the magic to try to create something that looks a little bit more like this. So, first thing I'm going to do is to uh, tone down this uh, Pillsbury sign uh, that's on here. Um, so what I'm using here is uh, some 3600 uh, micro finishing abrasive pads. Um, we can just uh, tack this and what is, because it's such a fine um, paper it's not going to actually uh, leave scratches on the uh, the tank car itself and if you do get a little bit of scratch on it then you can just uh, go up the numbers in terms of the uh, the grade here and I got up to uh, 1200 so if I start to use an 8000 for example you can you can get rid of all the all the scratches so as you can see we're toning that one down nicely Again, look at your prototype uh, photographs and take off as much or as little as you uh, as you want. But it definitely needs to be a lot more faded than when it came out of the factory. So, here we go. Already. A lot better. I'm just using this uh, sanding dry, but you can use it wet as well if, uh, if you've got a lot more detail there that you want to make sure you don't lose as you're doing the sanding. Next up, we're going to give it a light uh, dusting with an airbrush, and uh, you might think, well, to tone down that blue that I should be using white but uh, now what I'm going to do here is to use uh, skin tone uh, you can, this is uh, Vallejo Model Air 076 skin tone but of course you can use uh, uh, any uh, flesh color you can use white um, but I just find that uh, you know white is a rarely seen color in the real world so what I'm going to do is uh, again uh, thin it as we've talked about in previous videos lots of uh, light coats as opposed to one heavy coat and again because it's thinned um, you know you've got to watch for drips as well so when you're spraying um, just a light color and again from fading wise lighter at the top you know darker underneath where the cylindrical hopper bends underneath again on the ends of the uh, hopper you know these are quite protected from uh, from fading so you're not going to see it quite uh, as much back to you in a second so, as we can see now, we've got a much lighter uh, version of our blue car. Nicely lightened up. Takes that bright blue out the box look away completely. Okay, so next up is the all important rust. Um, and obviously on these cylindrical hoppers they all rust in different ways but there are some consistencies and again if we look at the photograph where the welded uh, sections are you tend to get you know these accentuated by the uh, by the rust obviously uh, water hitting and flying down there, everything has to be vertical so if you're going to do rust you know going off at an angle <laughs> even slightly is going to be uh, uh, look look poor so what you need to do is to make sure everything is going top to bottom vertical and again think about where these things are going to rust and where they're rusting you know just underneath the footboards at the top obviously these are there are welds here so these tend to rust um, welds on the steps and where people are using them all the time so again think about how the thing is used but again but you know going back to a prototype photo is clearly the uh, the best way to uh, to look at this so uh, what I'm using to do these uh, weld seams is uh, Ammo by MIG uh, 
oil brushers and uh, these are uh, super uh, um, pieces of uh, weathering gear um, so uh, this is an oil that's already been thinned and so you don't have to do anything with it it works straight out of the bottle you need to shake it well first and what you have actually got you've seen your wife doing your uh, eye makeup or lip gloss or whatever else you've got a uh, a uh, brush on the end hence the term oil brusher so again it's all about taking your time uh, keeping your eye on the photograph of the uh, original and then uh, just uh, starting to apply the oil so what I'm doing first is just to put a bit of oil on the uh, bits where these uh, foot plates actually are welded and again just on that piece underneath we can just suggest some chipping and rusting there too across the top of the foot pitch there and then some on the handrails where the crew would be climbing up and just chipping the and wearing the paint off and of course the welds but ultimately you get to a point where you know you've got to uh, start picking out these uh, I've got my prototype fader to uh, stay up because I'm trying to paint from that so find the seam and then just gently start to suggest the rust coming down or being on that seam and again each of the seams weathers uh, differently sometimes it's all the way down other times it starts from the bottom so on my prototype photo this seam for example it starts from the bottom but then gets wider mm. down here and uh, just as we come to the uh, Pillsbury logo, we're seeing uh, quite a bit more rust kind of spreading out uh, on the bottom. Again, this seam here on the Pillsbury sign actually starts part way through the, the decal. And this one doesn't even touch the Pillsbury word, it starts from further down. And I don't build these cars, so I don't know why these rust in this, this way, I'm not an engineer. And all I'm doing is taking my clues and prompts from a photograph of the original, which I just found on the, on the internet. So these last three again if you go back to the picture this one particularly we start to see it spreading out past the scene and this one starts right from the top and goes all the way down as does this one on the end but quite a bit lighter so as you can see here we're a bit of a thinner line. And then when we get to the bottom here we've got some rusting. There's actually a scratch that goes across there and then in between here we're starting to see random dots of, uh, dots of rust all along these bottom bit different sizes. Just keeping your eye on the prototype photo. Again, easily with these uh, with the seams, you can actually count and go back to your original photograph and see which seams are uh, weathering in what order. And this one here, particularly, there's a, a lot of rust here. We'll do the patching later on. But as you can see, just these two panels are heavily 
uh, rusted as is this one here. So again, that's again. So this one's uh, one, two back from there. So we've got it here. Comes across here a little bit, and then up to there. And then with this one, it's just uh, full on. Not great. Again, we're suggesting along the seam at the bottom. Rust. So we're getting our brush in there. <coughs> and of course, rust is not just uh, one color. <coughs> So here again we're going to use our uh, old favourite Starship Filth and we're going to knock up some variation here, just some different colours. So, and then finally, give it a good shake. I'm using uh, dark mud. As you'll see in a minute, with this we don't need to be too accurate because we're going to get a bit crazy here in a second with a, with a wider brush. there and uh, one over the top again you can just wipe that off so now we've got a wider brush and uh, the moment of truth really where we're going to start to uh, just drag this stuff uh, this stuff down as you can see as it gets onto this bottom rail across the bottom it's almost like dry brushing by the time we get down there. It starts to be a nice effect. So again, going back to our prototype, both of these two here are heavily weathered, so we need to just come back here and start to uh, really push that one up. And again, this is all about how much paint you keep on your brush. Again, you can wipe it off if you need to. Again, we're accentuating this. You can see it's just dragging down the dragging down the oils. We're starting to get a really nice effect of a of a rusted cylindrical hopper. Again, don't forget the uh, underneath. We can use this as a dry brush to just pick out some details there but we'll come back to those again uh, shortly okay so again we've got a nice effect there but we just wiped away probably too much of the detail um, so now I'm going to come back in again with my rust oil brusher and re-establish some of the actual dots which have, or the spots that have actually caused the rust in the first place and this scratch for example that we put in earlier is what's gone but now what we've got now is the edge re um, re-established and again you've got a nice effect the 
these dots. Takes a bit of a steady hand, but yeah, the good news is that when it comes to weathering, it's all pretty haphazard. This is the effect we're we're going for. So again, I'm going to come in here with my dark mud as well, so I can give it a shake. And again, to try to uh, re-establish these uh, darker spots. Again, I was referring back to your prototype photograph, so you can see how things have And again, if you want to just get some of these still dripping in lightly, just uh, drag your brush down and you get that nice effect. Get the rust running down the side. And don't forget you're underneath here. As you can see, we're almost using this as a dry brush to get the gates to stand up nicely. Okay, so then finally, um, got this rust anyway, at least at this point, I'm going to use some uh, hull red. This time it's an acrylic. And again, we're just going to reinforce some of these uh, dark spots, because you can see for the rust there's some light bits for sure, but there's also some really dark, almost black spots in amongst here. Vary it up a bit. Rest is lots of different colours for sure. Again, look at these steps, the ends of your car. The drake wheel has been used. Again, think about crew climbing up and down these steps. Again, it's all about variation. So while we're waiting for the uh, sides to dry, uh, just again used uh, rust and some whole red to just uh, paint the, uh, the footwalk. So you can still see that it was blue originally, but now uh, there's lots of uh, markings and damage on there so now what we're going to do is to just again go back to our oil paints and start to think about the hinges so again we're just going to suggest that the hinges are rusting And you don't have to use oil paints for this, you can definitely use uh, acrylics, but what I've got this out, you know, I just want to show you the adaptability of uh, using this brush on the, uh, the oil brushes. Again, these pieces, the clasps that go across the top. We can uh, consider them rusty uh, candidates for sure. Dark mud, so I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, the rust again to just uh, remind ourselves that rust is not one colour. Hmm. 
obviously we're not going to uh, bust these hatches because generally these are made of fiberglass. So um, we don't want to be uh, actually using those, right? Because those are fiberglass doesn't rust, at least as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, so we just. Uh, Use a little bit of uh, powders here. This is another MIG uh, Productions one, and this one's uh, Industrial City Dirt. And what I'm going to do here is just to dust this like a final paintbrush. Ochre again. And just around these bits where they're you'd expect to see. Some musting. Again, don't need a lot at all here. And then just to tone it again, down a little bit more, just there, burnt umber. And working it across the body picks up on those nice uh, seam lines. Thank you. 
carefully. Let's see, I'll just tidy this down nicely. So next, next up I've made a small mask and I'm just going to uh, patch out the reporting marks. side there we go Masking tape, I usually, no, usually use uh, Tamiya masking tape, but when I'm just cutting a hole to do a rough uh, outline for something like this with the patchy marks, then as you can see that just does, just does the job nicely, so we can repatch this as a Sioux unit. We've also got the uh, Pillsbury original reporter marks up underneath uh, inside here as well, so I've just uh, painted those out with a brush. Waiting for that patch to dry, we can just do the, uh, the wheels. Uh, and again, so we've got Vallejo rust color here. Just uh, running inside the wheels. I know there's all sorts of uh, equipment that can help you do this. Take the wheels out and put them in. Uh, masks and such like you can get those from micromark personally you know with so many wheels on the lat that I have I just find it quicker to do it this way don't have any problems with running again just getting a bit of our dark red ochre from Vallejo pigments and we're just gonna Add this to the wheels. Don't need too much. see a nice realistic face to the wheels. So I mentioned earlier on that these uh, covers on the hatches at the top are often you know, chopped around so you can go mad you can have everything different all, all different colors um, but I've just done one here and I painted it in uh, in white just to add a bit of interest to the top so again using that wet palette making sure we thin our paints, multiple thin coats as opposed to one thick coat and uh, we'll just continue to build up the layers on this until we get a nice uh, even finish. Could finish it off, uh, could mask it off over and spray it but because I've got these nice hinge details that we rusted earlier um, I decided to paint it by by hand. So again any colors you want on the top um, yeah, if 
you uh, ever get to see these from standing on that footbridge you can see that uh, the colors are often quite interesting okay the final job here is to uh, put on the conspicuity stripes so I normally use the smoke box uh, self adhesive graphics but uh, um, I've run out of those so I'm just waiting for some more to come so I'm just using uh, these from uh, highball graphics and uh, as we can see from our prototype picture of them being vertical on this one they're actually uh, horizontal so that's how we're going to uh, put these on so some warm distilled water and uh, we'll get to it So just finishing these uh, conspicuity stripes with some microsol microset microscale uh, microset excuse me and that's it so I kind of screwed up a little bit because uh, I thought I had the decals for, or another set of decals for the uh, the Sioux patch, but unfortunately uh, I clearly used up the last one, so I'm gonna have to order some some more. So uh, anyway, uh, final version. We'll dust some uh, powders just over those uh, conspicuity strips once they're. Uh, they're dry and uh, just so they don't look overly clean I mean you can lose them clean because they're being they're being done all the time uh, as they try to move all the fleet to having these markings but uh, yeah so hopefully there's some tips there that uh, might help you and uh, see you on the next one